Hi guys, John here. Today I'll explain a step-by-step -step guide regarding uh, Git commands, how you can configure SSH on your machine and push your first file into GitHub. So let's dive into it. So first you need to go to git-stm.com as you can see here. Click on downloads for Windows. Whenever it's done, you can open the installer here. So here you have a few options. So the first one uh, concerning Git Bash. So it's basically a Unix terminal uh, running on Windows here. So you can execute Git commands from there, for example. You can also have a um, user interface to launch git commands directly from this UI here. And then you have the git lfs option that allows to support large files inside git, typically binaries. I recommend to check this one. For the two other option, you can leave it as it is. So click on next here. It's how you can configure the default text editors that will be used by Git whenever it needs to merge file, for example. So by default, I think Vim is uh, is used, but if you're not familiar with it, you can select your own, like Notepad++ or VS Code. Click on Next. So here it's basically how uh, the default branch will be named uh, by Git. So I, I recommend to leave it as Master, which is the default option here. Next. It's uh, how uh, the Git will be accessed through the pass. So I recommend to leave this here. Uh, same here is uh, using the SSH exe file. So it's basically to, for secure access to, for remote repositories. Same for SSL. Here, as you're on Windows, I recommend to leave as to text file will end by the Windows CRLF, which is the default text format for Windows. Here, yeah, I recommend to leave as use MinTTY, which is a lightweight version uh, of a terminal emulators and Windows 1. Here, I'll explain in uh, another tutorial exactly what fast forward or merge is, but it's basically Git pool is basically used to integrate remote changes inside your local repo. And here, credential helper, you can leave as the default one here. So here for extra options, you can enable the file system caching, with, which will optimize a bit uh, the performance. And for symbolic links, um, it might be useful if you, for example, use um, local dependencies and um, link them to your project and here are experimental features usually i don't check them and you go install here okay so when git is installed you can open for example in vs code a powershell terminal here terminal and say powershell so here i have a already configured um, my PowerShell to look like this, but you might have a different look and feel. So just check that Git is in the pass. First, type git dash dash version. Enter, and it shows the current version. So git install and in the path. So what we need for secure access, we need to have a pair of keys. The SSH is based on a pair of keys, one public, one private. You need to generate them first. So to generate your uh, keys, if you don't have one, first you need to execute this exe file here, ssh-keygen. It will ask the location to save those keys so by default it's in your home directory and the name also id underscore rsa here you may have you may enter a passphrase but it's not uh, mandatory 
I don't want one, so I type enter here. So next, so it's done creating those keys. So let's uh, look at the location. So by default, as I said, it's in your home directory. So here it's uh, mine here. You can find it directly by typing this. Enter, then open this. So here you have your keys. So one is public, this one here, dot pub one, and can be shared with, with anyone. So it will be shared with GitHub here. And this one here, the first one, ID underscore RSA shouldn't be shared with anyone. You should keep it secret and don't share it. Okay, so after generating your keys, we now need to start the SSH agent, which is a process allowing to use those keys each time you will access uh, an SSH server. Typically here, and we will need it for GitHub access. So let's start it. On Windows, you can use this command line here. You just have to do this once. Okay, so it said that it added the, my SSH key here. So now we need to tell, we need to tell uh, GitHub that we want our public key to be granted in our repo. So let's go into GitHub. So you need a GitHub account, obviously. You sign into it, then goes to your repo we will create a new one here new we give a name my git repo for example leave the default option create repo here so here it gives you the address of your repo on, on github we will try to clone that but it will fail because we are not yet granted First, we need to give access with our public key. So you open it with a text editor here. Yeah. Control A to select everything. Control C to copy the content. Then goes to settings in GitHub. SSH. New SSH key. You give a name like my SSH key, you could put whatever you want, and you paste the content of your public key here without any other character and click on add SSH key. So now GitHub is aware that this public SSH key has access to my personal repo here. So we can now try to clone one. For example, you go to repos your repositories here. I have this new one. I want to clone it locally. That basically means I have access to it in my local machine. I copy paste that. I go to a terminal. Then I type git clone. Let's open a new terminal. Git clone. The address for my re remote repo enter it's trying to call it <clears throat> so the first time it will ask if you want to continue because it's not aware of uh, github.com uh, host so once you have to do that once permanently added github.com to the list of non hosts so it's okay now and the clone repo is empty obviously but it's here my git repo here so as you can see here it's saying that i'm on master branch and there's no file okay so now let's try to add a new file we'll create a new html file like i open it with vs code uh, 
I will use VS Code snippet to create one automatically here. HTML content. You can put a title here. I save it. Now we'll try to push it to uh, on your repo on GitHub. So to do that, you need to type git add. So any file, maybe check first the status of the git repo here. So as you can see here, there's no commits in this branch and there are untracked files, which means that we need to add those files to be tracked by git first. So to do that, we need to type git add in the path to the file, or if there's no other file, we can put git add dot here. Now the file is planned to be added in the next commit, which I do by typing git commit dash m with message, meaning the message of the commit. Adding, you can put whatever you want, is the message of the, this commit, enter. So now I've created a local commit. So if I type git status, the, the file is no more untracked. And if I type git log, I can see that in the history of a commit, I, I see now my new commit. The ID of the commit, the author, and the date of the commit. And the message. So now it's locally uh, committed, but I want to push it. Basically, this means to send it to GitHub, and you just do that by typing it push. So it will send local commits from this branch, master branch, into my remote master branch on GitHub. Done. If we look at GitHub now. Now the file is here. As you can see, the file has been pushed by this user, me here. And that's it for today. I hope you found this useful. If yes, please smash the like button. And don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comment section below. And see you in the next one.